It's recording properly. It's not recording. It's recording. Okay, okay, good. So, um, let me explain the assumption part, huh? since someone has requested uh, 72. Okay, almost every one of them are back. Good. So the first assumption is a normality uh, for, because this is a parametric statistical test. For parametric, all variables must be continuous. Huh? So continuous, and when continuous and the dependent variable got to be, dependent variable got to be normal, normality. So this is what we did, so, and this is normal. So the first assumption is fulfilled. This is second one, we are testing the linearity. So the responses you can see here all, you know, along the line. So if deviates too much far from this line, uh, then slot it, then you have a problem. Huh? Uh, so there are treatment also how to do that, uh, which I won't have the time to do, uh, to, to show you. Uh, so the data is linear. So data is normal, linear. So normality, linearity, both are mixed. And this one is the scatter plot. This one shows you whether the data is heterosidastic. Huh? Heterosidastic data is fast, dispersed, huh? not concentrated. So you see all dot, dot, dot. These are the responses of participant. They are all not concentrated in one place. They are all concentrated in one, then you have serious problem. Um, as many people used to come to me for SPSS running and uh, you know getting help when they have trouble. There was one PhD student came to see me who, uh, who's, uh, who's, who was having a heterosidastic book problem. And it took me, I think, more than two weeks to settle it. You can imagine how problematic it could be. <laughs> Uh, it's very difficult to solve it, you know, when you have heterosedasticity problem uh, in the in the data. Data got to be heterosedasticity, so meaning that you have a homo scedasticity problem, right? So that's what is understood. So this is the third assumption. So this case, third assumption is also made. The fourth one, we call it multicollinearity. And... Uh, to see the multicollinearity, we look at condition index. You can see it has collinearity diagnostics, right? This box, name it as collinearity diagnostics. And under that, we only look at condition index. The condition index got to be below 30. Below 30. How do you know it's below 30? The last value, because it's accumulative. First one plus second one, they go to third one plus, you know, it, that, that, how it is accumulated. They do it, the, the software does it, okay? So here, the last value that we got to look at, 27.34. This is below 30, meaning that condition index values are below the benchmark 30. It's not above 30. So we can make a safe conclusion that there is no multicollinearity problem in the model. In the model, huh? not in the data in the model. What does it mean? Independent variables are not overlapping. Independent variables are really independent. That's the conclusion it gives you. So there's no multicollinearity problem. If there's a multicollinearity problem, there is a treatment for it also. If you have a problem, there is a treatment, which I, I'm not being able to uh, cover that today, okay? So the fourth assumption also made, no multicollinearity problem in your model. The fifth assumption is autocorrelation problem, or we call it serial correlation for serial, huh? one, two, three, four, five, six, serial. Serial correlation problem, autocorrelation problem. What does it mean? It means that one response, one respondent fill in, and the next respondent fill in, both are the same. Should, what should I do this one? This select a folder. Oh, okay. The same. Documents or my desktop is there? No, documents to my documents. Eh? Okay. All right. Uh, so, this one we are talking about uh, multicollinearity, right? But here we are talking about autocorrelation, a serial correlation problem. Serial correlation meaning all responses are similar. So, that's where we look at and catch a student. Eh? Uh, when I see that multicollinear, this autocorrelation problem exists, we will ask the student, 
did you really distribute the questionnaire? Okay. So if you do not distribute and fill in questionnaire by yourself, that's where you will be caught. Because you are having one brain. Even though you try to be different, but once you fill in one set, when you are filling in the next set, you won't know what did you fill in the first set. And it's go on, you know, it goes on. So you have similar brain mindset. So responses would be very similar. Thus, you will have autocorrelation problem. Okay. So to diagnose whether your data, this is not about model, about your data, whether your data suffers autocorrelation problem or not, there are three items that you got to look at. First one. Uh, okay, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Sorry, I mix mix it a bit. For multicollinearity, you have another two also beside the condition index. Sorry, sorry. Uh, condition index, then you have to look at tolerance and VIF. Okay. Tolerance value must be below one. And VIF, variance influencing factor, must be below 10. In our case, all tolerance are below one. And all VIF is below 10. And condition index is below 30. So all three criteria conclude that there is no multicollinearity problem for this model. Okay. Now we considered more on PLS, so sorry, I, I forgot that there are three dimensions to look at for multicollinearity. Okay. <laughs> All right. For <laughs> autocorrelation, you look at Darwin Watson. You can see here Darwin Watson. Remember, I tick Darwin Watson. That's the reason I click Darwin Watson. Because I want to see whether the model suffers from multicollinearity problem. Darwin Watson, the range is 1.5 to 2.5. If the Darwin Orson value follow below 1.5 or above 2.5, then our conclusion would be your data suffers from autocorrelation or serial correlation problem, meaning that your responses are very similar. You know, sometimes what we do, we go to your place and ask people to fill in, and you see 20, 30 people sitting together. Like if you are having students' respondents and they fill in question in a classroom, and that's what will happen. They look at each other and they fill in. Okay. In that case, you will have this problem, multicollinear, sorry, autocorrelation problem. Okay. So the benchmark is 1.5, below 1.5 is a problem, above 2.5 is a problem. So 1.5 to 2.5. And these all have references, okay, which I'm not mentioning. You can uh, find it out for yourself. So now this specific data also doesn't have autocorrelation problem. Okay. So now I tested all five assumptions. The data is normal. Linear, there's no heterostatisticity problem, there's no multicollinearity problem, there's no autocorrelation problem, meaning that this multiple regression results is unquestionable, is acceptable. So even though only two hypotheses accepted, but it's acceptable, okay? Out of six, only two accepted. So that's the common question the students will have. Uh, from what should I do now? Only two accepted, other four rejected. <laughs> so you have all those supporting statistical evidence. Statistically, everything is fine. So why uh, four rejected? If you find previous researchers found to be significant, but in your case is not significant, then only explain Then you have to connect it with the demographic profile of your respondents. That's why we run demographic profile. Possibly your demographic profile are very different. The respondents profile are very different from respondents of previous researches. That's number one. Number two, your context is different. Okay, the environment in Australia or US or UK, definitely totally different from, from, from Kashmir, from, uh, from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, from India, Sri Lanka, all that, right? We have different setup in the industry. Environment is different. Therefore, the findings could be different. So you have to relate it to respondents. You have to relate back with the environment, the context where you are conducting your study to explain why your findings are so different from others. Okay. Any question before I proceed to run mediating? Sir, may I know what autocorrelation uh, from where we can see that? Sorry, again. Autocorrelation. Auto from... This is, this is the box. You can see model summary. Yes, sir. Okay. Model summary, Darby Watson. 
Okay, thank you, sir. This is 1.7. Okay. So it fall within 1.5 to 2.5. So the conclusion is there is no autocorrelation problem. Okay. I got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Welcome. So I proceed now. Eh? If no question, so then I'll proceed. Sir, yes. one question I would like to ask is that is that the benchmark same for everyone? Like you said, it collinearity tolerance, it should be less than one. Yes. So is it same for everyone? Yes. For yes, every yes. data? Yes, yes. For tolerance below one, for VIA is below 10. For condition okay. index uh, is up to 30. When you run moderating, mediating, MDY is the same. Okay, okay? mediating, same. Moderating is a bit different. I will explain that why. Okay.